Hello, this is Tim DeLeon from Focus First, and this short tutorial is on how to create your scattergram. Now, I'll be doing this tutorial on a Mac, but it works the same as on a PC. If there's any differences, I'll be sure to point them out. Now, we're going to assume that you've already listened to several of the other tutorials, that you already do know how to export data from your MLS, you have an overall understanding of the visual pricing system, and also that you know how to select data from your MLS data form. As you can see, we've already read in an exported data file. So to create the scattergram, we need to go to the pricing button. Once we select the pricing button, we'll see the MLS data form. Let's also make sure that the scattergram ribbon is showing so that our scattergram tools are easily available. Now, as you're probably aware from watching the other videos, the scattergram is not created automatically for you. So let's select data to put on our scattergram. As we showed in the selecting data video, we're just going to use the Create Graph Options and then select, use the Select Data option on the Scattergram dialog box. Let's do that right now. Now we have the Scattergram filter. Of course, the default is select all the sold data in the last six months. Now, it turns out in this area, the market is somewhat seasonal. So if we just looked at the last six months of data, we wouldn't have much to see. So for this example, we're going to look at activity for the last nine months. So let's change the market date. OK, everything else looks good. Let's select those properties. Now we can see that the selection was made. You can see by the checkbox right here, all those properties were selected. Now let's assume that we're looking to price a two-story property. So usually when I'm pricing a two-story property, I only want to compare it to other two-story properties. So let's sort on two-story properties and remove the other properties that are not two stories. Again, I'm going to go through this fairly quickly since I did take more time in the previous uh, select data video. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. So now that we got all the properties selected, let's create our scattergram and see what that looks like. To create the scattergram, we're going to use the Create Graph Option button. Then we'll select the Create Graph button under the scattergram option. Now you will see that there's several options that you can make use of when you create your scattergram. Most of these are fairly straightforward. First of all, in this section, you can select Graph Total Square Feet finished square feet, above ground square feet, number of bedrooms, or acres. Be aware that some of these options may not be available for your MLS area. As you probably do know in real estate size matters, if everything else is equal, homes that are larger in size will sell for more. In most cases, being able to graph either total square feet or finished square feet will give you the best results. However, if your area does not support that, you should be able to graph the number of bedrooms. While well, graphing the number of bedrooms won't be as effective as graphing the total square feet or finished square feet, the number of bedrooms can be an indicator of the size of the home, so it does work. Now for this sample, we'll graph the total square feet. We do often get the question, should we graph total square feet or finished square feet? My answer is try them both. The graphs are easy to create, and what we're looking for is a strong correlation between price and size. When we have a strong correlation, then it's really easy to price properties. In our case, I'll generally graph total square feet. Down below here, we can decide if we want to create a trend line, show the value boxes, and or data point information. For scattergrams, I will almost always create the trend line, especially when I take a look at things for the first case. So let's look at that. The show value boxes can also be a great help in showing you where you want to get more size for the price. If you select this option, It'll create a text box in the upper left and up and lower right corners summarizing the values. Let's show you what that will look like. This last option will leave blank for now. We'll come back and show you what that does a little bit later. So let's create our scattergram. Okay, the scattergram is now complete. Now to find the scattergram, all we gotta do is look down here, and we see that there's now a new tab below which is labeled PS Gram. This is short for Pricing Scattergram. When we select this tab, we're able to see 
the scattergram. Now let me point out a few things on this chart. The first, of course, is at the very top is our title. It shows when the dates of data that was selected. Down on this left-hand side is the price. It shows the prices of the properties that are sold. At the bottom, we're showing the size of each of those properties. Each of these data points represents one of the homes that have sold. You can put your cursor over one of the data points, and it shows the price and size associated with that data point. On the upper left and lower right are the value boxes. Properties closer to this box have less space for the dollar, and properties closer to this box have more space for the dollar. In general, homes closer to this box would have more value. Now, I say in general because we still have to look at the condition and special features of the, of the individual homes before we make that assumption. This blue line here is a trend line, or sometimes we like to refer to that as a fair market value line. As you can see for this area, there's a strong correlation between price and size. What that means is for this area, most of the data points are right along the fair market value line. Now, we do see some exceptions. As you can see over here, these data points over here are much, uh, much higher than the trend line. And down below here, this property right here is much lower than the trend line. Now, scattergrams are great tools for helping folks price properties. And they're great tools for us as realtors to really force us to ask the right questions. For example, why are these properties over here so far above the trend line? And why is this property down below here so far below the trend line? When we price properties, we like to consider five factors. Location, price and size of homes that have sold recently, and special features and condition. Now you're able to see all five of these factors on one graph at one time when you use the scattergram pricing chart. Now this current graph we see location because all these properties are from the same neighborhood when I exported them. And they're all pretty much in a comparable location because of that. I mean, there might be some nuances in the same subdivision. Uh, some folks might back up to a busy street, or somebody might back to a green belt. If that's the case, we'll handle that nuance when we consider the special features and condition. Of course, on this graph, you can easily see the price the properties have sold for and their size. So the last factors that need to be considered are the special features and condition. And we recommend that you highlight the special features and condition by putting the text box alongside each of the data points and summarize those special features and condition. Now, this program will go a long ways to helping you do that. To show you that, we need to recreate the scattergram. So let's go back to the MLS data sheet and create the scattergram once again. As before, we start with the Create Graph Option button and then select the Create Graph option. We then use the Create Scattergram dialog box. Now these are the options that were previously set and they work perfectly fine for us. Let's just get rid of the show value boxes this time around. And then really what we want to do is select this box right here, which is going to create the text boxes for each data point. Now we can also customize the information in those text boxes. And let me give you a little short picture of what that looks like. As you can see for this situation, we're going to add the address, the finished square feet, total square feet, bedrooms, bathrooms, and year built. And we're going to go ahead and include all that information in each text box. Now there's more information that we can include. Of course, be aware that the more information you include, the more cluttered the graph will look. And you want to be careful because you want to make sure you keep a graph that looks very nice and clean and very clear. So let's go ahead and save those field choices. And let's create a graph. Now when we create the next graph, we're going to have the option for it to overwrite the previous version. Or if you'd like, you can just keep them both. So let's keep them both. Scattergram is now complete. And as you can see from the tabs below here, here's the first one that we created. And there's a second one back here. Let's take a look at the second one. Now, as you can see now, we have several boxes in the upper left part of the screen. These are all the text boxes that were created. We don't automatically put them next to a data point because we found that if we do, they hide other data points. So we've just put them up here to keep them out of the way. You can easily find which text box goes with which data point by putting your cursor over a data point and then finding the box that matches. For example, let's put our cursor over this data point right here. 
and you can see it actually says 2672. So all we have to do is come up here and look at 2672. And you can see that's this property right here. Then all we have to do now is select that. And once we select it, you see the little boxes are around there. And then we can move it next to the data point. Now to move it next to the data point, what we want to do is position our cursor to where we get four arrows. And once we get four arrows, it's easily moved. You can move it right next to the data point. Now you want to be careful about getting near the edges because when you get near the edges, you get two arrows and that'll sh change the shape of the text box. The text box is already set to automatically reshape based on the text in the box. So you don't want to reshape it. Now, once we move it to the location we want to, we can then edit the text in the text box and add in special features and condition to fully describe the property. For this box, let's go ahead and describe why it's so far below trend line. And I think we're going to guess that it needs some TLC and it probably was a foreclosure. Now, we'd have to really look at the detailed MLS sheet to really show that, but let's assume that for this example that that's the case and it really is. Let's go ahead and type in needs TLC foreclosure. And there we go. Now, we can move down the text boxes for every data point that makes sense. And we can add the special features and conditions for every data point. And once we do, we have all five factors of how we price properties on one graph at one time. Of course, there's also lots of these text boxes that maybe we don't really are interested in or maybe don't really make a difference for us. So if that's the case, we can just get rid of them. And to get rid of them, all we have to do is select them and then delete them. So let's delete a couple of these text boxes. Now I've selected this one right here and I'm going to select the next one by holding down the shift key. And let's select a few more. Now once I got a few selected, all I have to do is hit the delete key and they go away. Now if I need to select one, I can select one and then I got to make sure that if I select one and I select inside the text box and I hit delete, it tends to delete the characters. But if I make sure I select the outside, again looking for my four arrows, all I have to do is hit delete and I delete that single box. Once you've completed the scattergram, we like to present this graph by using the script, are you willing to list your property at fair market value? Now most people will give you one of two answers. Some people will say yes. The second is some people will say, well, what is fair market value? Then you can go into your script. Your script sounds something like this. What I've done is put all the homes that sold in your neighborhood in the last nine months on this one chart. Now when we price properties, we like to look at five factors. The most important factor is location, et cetera, et cetera. So you can kind of see how that script works. And we come to the actual pricing we like to ask the seller, do you know the size of your home? If they don't, we have that information readily available. Of course, we can have that information from a previous MLS sheet or that information is available on public records. Then we like to draw a straight line. Let's assume it's 2700. Then we like to draw a straight line from there and we'll say, do you agree that your home will sell somewhere on that line? Of course, that's a rhetorical question because of course their home is going to sell on that line. That's the size of their house. And then we like to point out, well, you can see where that matches the fair market value line. In this case, basically, that looks like right around $250,000. And then we say, well, based on the features and the condition of your home, what do you think you should be priced at? And they can see it. And that makes it so easy to price. Matter of fact, there's been times where they'll come back and say, well, my neighbor sold at $300,000. You say, yes, your neighbor did. But look, they sold near the trend line. They just have more square footage than you. And just like you should sell near the trend line as well. There's a great tool where people can see visually where their home needs to be priced at. We know you'll find the scattergram an effective tool for showing your clients where the home will be priced at based on where other homes sold in their neighborhood. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to watch some of our other videos. And don't forget to press the like button below.